y'all, this is Cheryl of Fiddle DD Designs. Today I'm here uh, with a tutorial on how to make custom shadows in Photoshop Elements. The version I'm using today is Photoshop Elements 11, but you can use this method in other versions of Photoshop Elements as well. I'm going to first start um, with a element in one of my uh, freebie templates and I'll be um, focusing on just this little pennant up at the top corner. It already has a shadow on it but you can um, you know see that um, if you were making a paper layout sometimes these little pennants would be curled up a little bit more um, instead of just flat on the page. So what you'll want to do is make sure that you've actually picked this layer. You'll see that my bounding box is around um, the actual element and that over in my layers palette that the actual layer is highlighted and um, you'll also see over to the right of the description of the layer that there's a uh, little icon that says FX which indicates that there's a layer style or a shadow and we're going to double click on that. Uh, your style settings box will come up showing your lighting angle and all the specifics about your drop shadow. You can make um, changes to your lighting angle here and you can change the size, distance, and opacity of your drop shadow. But right now we're just really going to do something really strange. We're going to come back over to our element. You're going to see me pull my cursor over here. The cursor is going to look a little bit different. It's going to look like the move tool. That's because we're going to be moving the shadow away from the element. So you can see it's like floating away and I can move it anywhere on the page here. We're just going to move it a little, little further away from our element and I'm going to press OK. From this point, you're going to make sure that you right click on the layer and we're going to choose Simplify Layer. Then I'll come over to my Tools palette. I'm going to choose Rectangular Marquee Tool. I'm going to make a selection around just the shadow of the pennant and then I'm going to right click inside of there and I'm going to choose layer via cut. What that does is I have now I have my pennant element and I have a separate layer that is now my shadow that is called layer one. So I'm going to rename that just double click there and I'm going to call that pennant shadow. As you can see it is above my pennant um, so I'm going to pull that over. We want it under, so we're just going to drag that underneath. And if we really want to line them up perfect, you just um, select both the pennant and the shadow and center um, those. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so we can really take a close look at this particular element. Now I'm just going to choose just the shadow element. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is to click on the corner of the bounding box um, when I have that layer picked and I'll click on the control key on a PC and I will just gently pull um, a little bit so it looks like that um, edge is lifting off the paper a little bit. Maybe like so. Nothing dramatic. But I, I still really want some uh, more of a custom look. So I'm going to continue making sure that my pennant shadow is selected. I'm going to come over to my tools area and you'll see um, a little section that's marked enhance. And I'm going to choose the smudge tool. Now, once you select this, it could have a different icon in it. You could have the blur tool, the sharpen tool, or it could already be on the smudge tool. Once you select the smudge tool, you'll have a um, little icon that looks like a finger pushing. And we're going to choose that. What I have right now is uh, the mode is set on normal. Um, I just have um, a, just a default brush picked. Um, at a strength of 50% and I'm going to come up to the shadow on the pennant and I'm looking at the button that's laying on top of the pennant. Now if this were a paper layout um, that button would be pushing down on the piece of paper making there be less of a shadow 
So I'm going to just gently push in here so you can see that there's a little bit more like it's pushing down on the paper. And then I may push in here a little bit as well. So it looks like maybe I've glued it down and there's a little bubble there. I'm going to come underneath here and I'm going to push up and maybe pull out a little here and maybe pull out a little here. I'm going to come over here and, and pull out a little bit. Give us some shadow over on this side. Push that back in a little bit. Now this custom shadow is going to look a little bit different depending on what background paper you have, um, what you know, what other elements are surrounding it. If you find that the shadow is too dark, you can always reduce the opacity um, so that uh, it's not so harsh. Still looks a little bit better. I'm going to pull out this we'll run through this one more time pull out this piece of rickrack it's a larger piece and this flower out of the way here just for the moment move these pieces out of the way so say I wanted it to look like I had glued portions of this piece of rickrack down so I'm going to do the same thing. I've selected my piece of rickrack. I'm going to double, double click on the FX icon. I'm going to come back over to the element. I'm going to pull it away. I'm going to pull it a good ways away. And I'm going to press simplify layer. I'm going to turn off my background paper so you can see my element a little bit better. Now I'm going to choose my rectangular marquee tool, draw my box, right click inside the box, choose layer via cut. Now I'm going to call this a Rick Rack Shadow. I'm going to gently move it back over, pull that back down under, move that together, I'm going to turn my background paper back on. So now you can see it's there and of course if I wanted to pull um, from one of the corners I could do that. Um, as you can see it kind of does funny things when you start warping it like that. So I'm just going to see here I don't think I want to move it any right now. I think I'm just going to use just the smudge tool here because I want it to raise up on certain edges. Okay, and I may want to, you know, move my shadow over a tad here or there. May want to rotate just a little bit, but you can continue playing with it. the The whole point is that once you take those couple of little steps, your shadow's removed. It's not stuck to that element any longer. It is on a separate layer, and so you can begin manipulating it. I'll do one more. Uh, let's do one. Let's do this flower here. Okay. I 
I'm going to unlink these layers just so we can work on the shadow on the very bottom. Um, again, I'm going to double click. I'm going to pull that shadow away. I'm going to simplify. Layer via cut. Now I have my flower shadow. I'm going to pull it underneath and then drag it back over. And so now I'm going to begin using um, my smudge tool again. I'm going to um, bring down the size of my brush a little bit. I'm going to start pushing in here a little bit. This just begins to give it a look as if the center of the flower um, was adhered down and just the corners are beginning to, just the edges of the flower are peeling up. I'll pull this so you can see the difference in the two shadows. So you can have it be, you know, pretty dramatic or not. Like this one over here, I'd probably reduce that shadow opacity. Probably pretty significantly there. Depending on what type of paper was on. So there you have it. Custom shadows. I hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. And um, have fun.